taking the industry academia collaboration to a new high. The Salamaris College in Chennai is collaborating with more than 20 industrial houses and corporate houses to help students get the benefit of internship and other opportunities to be industry ready. Thank you all very much for your time. If I can begin with you, Mr. Suresh Kalpati, what kind of opportunities would this bring for students? I think what it will first ensure is that these students become industry ready the moment they leave the gates of the college. Today a lot of industries spend quite a bit of time, effort and money to train freshers so that they become ready to be project ready within their organizations. So it's a lot of cost for the company, it's a lot of time and effort for the students which could have very well been subsumed within the college curriculum itself. So I think with the collaboration that one is starting to see between the industry and academia, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of time and effort that gets saved for the students and for the company. And of course for the company it's an addition to their bottom lines. Give us a sense of what kind of specific talents and skills employers look forward to from these young students. I think this varies from industry to right. industry. And I will probably take something that's not so often mentioned. We produce a lot of students who come out with BSc Zoology and BSc Botany. In India, that has always been a way that's seen as a way to get a graduation and not so much as a career. Now, one of the WHO studies that came recently said that in the next five, six years, there is going to be a requirement for 1.2 crore nurses right. worldwide. And that is like three times the population of Singapore. And those type of volumes can only come from a country like India. And we are collaborating with universities in Canada and UK to build a one-year topper program for students who have done BSc Zoology or Botany in India, which essentially means when they complete the course, they get an automatic work permit and they get into a job that pays starting $40,000 a year. So I think a lot of these collaboration will lead to students getting direct benefit and today that time in India has come. Give us a sense of how AI is set to transform the way we work and what steps do colleges take or should colleges take to get their students be AI ready? So you touched on the right now I would say. Um, I think I mentioned it in my talk today too. AI is uh, uh, taken the world by storm, but the regulatory rules has not been put in place yet. So worldwide, they are struggling to see because it's 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 growing at a pace that the regulators are not able to keep up with. But how colleges can embrace the goodness of AI would be to set up COE, so Center of Excellences, so where the, any student, like uh, you know, like a a zoology student or a history student, everyone should be exposed the the, the know-hows of AI, how to use it in their study. For example, if it's a history student who are going into the data is always the data is the key. So AI is used to do intelligent mining rather than just, you know, like so synthetic data could be created. So AI should be a part and parcel, at least a foundational AI should be introduced into the curriculum so that the students, like it's like a WhatsApp in the next couple of years. Everyone should know how to use it. So I think uh, it's very important, the liberal arts, and that too when the ABTC sector is booming like this, for them to understand the know-hows of AI, and institutions should all have center of excellence is working with industries, as well as you know other institutions collaborating to bring this to the students. We also have the principal, Dr. Stella Mary. Uh, is the college, or institutions like yours ready now to accept changes to develop programs that could actually get students uh, get those skills required to be industry ready yeah. uh, thank you we are always open for changes <laughs> and especially for students in uh, updating of their knowledge upskilling of the knowledge and their skills we are always open for them and we also set a curriculum um, and syllabus accordingly uh, to improve their skills yeah and this kind of collaboration uh, doctor would it open up opportunities like internship for your students uh, as they uh, com before they complete their programs uh, certainly, this is one of the criteria why we have really initiated this wonderful program. It's not only for internship, it's also, I said, uh, sk uh, skill building as well as uh, to have a lot of placements um, for students across the departments. 
Ms. Manita Benagopal, you're the CEO of Tamil Nadu Technology Hub. You work nurturing deep tech technology interests among students. Uh, how do you take this to campuses like this to, to help startup ideas or innovations on campuses to give them shape? Uh, one of the key things we do is ours is just not deep tech, it's emerging tech too. So there's a fine line between deep tech and you know emerging tech. If you call the the large language models that came and then chat GPT was you know kind of invented, then that becomes you know AI becomes the emerging tech, but the LLM models becomes the deep tech. So what we are doing is uh, we are working with. Uh, we are actually partnership with Anna University. We are located in the heart of Chennai, right with the 30,000 square feet in the middle of uh, Chennai. And uh, we work with different colleges across Tamil Nadu, uh, mainly bringing the innovation network into our ecosystem, basically, and running boot camps. What that means is we have uh, PhD professors who have very innovative deep tech ideas that they want to know how they can either do a uh, PPP partnership with us or they want to commercialize this so we help them to take it to the next level as well as we provide incubation space or co-working space in our ecosystem. This is a very nascent organization, seven months old, but uh, we are closely working as being part of the IT department coming up with the AI mission policy. The IT department is coming up very soon with that. So the AVGC policy that uh, right. Mr. Suresh was mentioning. So. We would be bringing the universities together in the next one year so that you know these government policies are in alignment with their curriculum as well as uh, you know bringing in incubation, uh, deep tech into incubating into our ecosystem. You're the founder of Kalpati Investments, co-founder of AGS Entertainment and um, a Cinemas. In terms of the opportunities in the entertainment space for youngsters, uh, I know Chennai is turning into a hub for many high-tech post-production work. What are the emerging opportunities now? I think one of the biggest spaces that we are finding is to bring cutting-edge production quality onto the screens. I mean, we saw in a movie like uh, Triple R or Bahubali, right. which sort of took the quality of production to the next level, very akin to what you would see in a Hollywood movies. I think that is required. And what we are finding interestingly is in one of our movies, I recently found that this was actually a computer science graduate from IIT Madras who has taken on to doing post-production for just audio okay. and highly specialized field. And we used him in one of the movies and it makes a very, very significant difference. So I think this is an emerging area, but obviously it requires our talent to be trained to be at the cutting edge. And today the industry in India and the consumers are starting to demand something of that nature. How challenging, how difficult or easy it is to bring about this kind of collaboration with industry? Yeah, it is a, really it's a need of the hour. After our uh, Prime Minister introduced the Mac in India and Startup India, uh, we, the Crescent Innovation Incubation Council, established in Crescent University, right. we introduced and uh, incubated uh, 200 uh, incubators in our uh, uh, institute, particularly 35,000 uh, crores uh, received from various government right. agencies right. for uh, the supporting of uh, the, that uh, startup, and also 500 crores of uh, assets we have created right. because of this. Another important uh, milestone uh, that uh, incubation is uh, council supporting for a faculty startup, student startup, right. in addition to the outsiders. Right. What kind of changes should campuses bring about when they work with industries? Because many are conventional systems in place. Our objective is bring in world-class education at affordable cost. Right. And if you have to going for the trillion dollar economy, which government of India is targeting, the skills should come from the colleges and institutions. So the, we are working with institutions on being future ready for the students and more emphasis on industry collaboration on the curriculum stuff where theory will be taught by the uh, colleges and the industry input should be given by uh, the institutions. And these type of initiatives make a big difference to the students. Last two questions, I need to ask you this. Is there a declining interest among students, particularly when it comes to say applying for civil services or government jobs, be it at the state level or the central level? 
on why? Uh, not necessarily, but we are trying. We are sort of seeing patterns regionally. Mm -hmm. So, if you take a state like Tamil Nadu over the last six, seven years, the number of people who become Indian Administrative Service qualified from Tamil Nadu has seen a very steady decline. We are doing some work in creating some cutting edge programs in this space to sort of bring that number back. But if you take most of the states in the north, whether it is Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Delhi, most of those, it's only continuing to go up. Interest in the central administrative service. State administrative service, the interest has always been there. In, in, in Tamil Nadu, there are close to 20 to 30 lakh people who write these exams when notifications come, one of which came very recently, just a few days ago. So the interest continues to be there, but it keeps changing regionally. Most of these students uh, are working towards getting jobs, but uh, what is your push towards? Are you nurturing them to become entrepreneurs, to take up innovation, and why? Um, that's a great question, but I think so. That has been an attempt why these cells have been created within the government. One of the initiatives by the Tamil Nadu government was to set up the startup Tamil Nadu within the MSME department was just to nurture the startups. And uh, that could, the startups could come from uh, student startups, it could be a mature startups. Now this innovation hub, which is, as I said, is like seven months old. Was Why should they think beyond jobs and look at entrepreneurship or uh, starting up? Two things. Um, it automatically, you know, brings jobs because these entrepreneurs could become self-sustained companies, which eventually grow the economy of the state as well as, you know, the country. And also, you get an opportunity because there is a lot of creativity in the students. So, as I was telling in my talk, if you're not afraid to test, that's why we are giving free co-working spaces. We are giving grants, like, you know, there is Tanseed grant coming, there's Startup India grant coming. So, we are helping in all possible ways for the students at a very young age to give it a chance in the entrepreneurial journey. We have a standing successful example right next to you. And similarly, we have many cases like that so we want to nurture that why should someone think of becoming an entrepreneur or starting up I think it's a great question I think in the last 30 years so much has changed that the students actually don't know the path to becoming an entrepreneur right. because while people might want to start the impediments or the things that they don't know might seem very unsurmountable so if there is a proper education that's given to them in terms of how do you do a startup, what are the challenges that are going to be there and what are the agencies which are now available, whether it's a co-working space or startup investments or the accelerator programs or multiple rounds of funding from agencies which can now make their job much more doable. And I think it's important that education spreads. Finally, the choice as to one who becomes an entrepreneur otherwise clearly comes from within themselves. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for your time. and. Uh the industry academia collaboration in a sense on a new high uh, around this space you have an opportunity for students to talk to to collaborate with several industries and they hope that this will really take innovation and starting up to a new high at the salamaris college in chennai with suresh sam daniel finally tv